All right, guys, I want to welcome everybody to the second episode of I Remember Gaming's Pokemon feature. Today we're going to have sex, violence, drugs, knives, stabbings, murder, death, kill. So everyone stay tuned and blah, 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 blah. the most anticipated event of the new decade. The Pokemon phenomenon is sweeping the nation. It's the number one rated kids television show. The number one selling video game and trading card game in America. Pokemon Mania includes best-selling books and a chart-topping soundtrack CD, including songs by today's hottest stars. Pokemon, 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 Pokemon. 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 Don't expect Pokemon to disappear. It's still going strong. Pokemon is a $6 billion industry worldwide. Pokemon is the fifth most searched word on the internet. Pokemon merchandise even outsells Star Wars. It is everywhere. The rage is going wild. Pokemon is a proven winner with an $87 million box office. Pokemon opened at number one and is the second highest animated feature opening ever. Now, unfortunately, at the same time that the Pokemon phenomenon was going down, I was starting to hang out with uh, a little bit rougher crowd than my parents would have would have liked me to. Coming from a religious household, when I started to pierce my ear, dye my hair, wear baggy Jinko dreams, wallet chains, backwards hats, my parents had a small cause for a lot. In junior high, I always put off a persona like I was the coolest kid in school, you know. If you didn't like me, I just like, okay, let's let's meet out of the flagpole. But really, I was desperate to fit in. You know, I acted like I was already in, but I didn't really know what in was. I didn't know what I wanted to be. Deep down, I had some insecurities, but on the outside, just confidence. I had uh, rolled with some friends that were kind of into stealing and some other juvenile activity. And these friends used to tell me, you know, Pokemon's lame, why do you play that, you're not cool, blah, blah, blah. Like I said, I was trying to fit in, I took them to the mall one day and showed them how much you could sell a Charizard card for. They couldn't believe it. Next thing you know, my friends were robbing Walmart in droves. They'd go through with their hand through their hoodie, walk by the Pokemon cards with one hand out, looking at a magazine, pull them all into their hoodie pocket and walk out the door, put the magazine down on the way out. You know, I was cool, I was just like, look, whatever. Whatever you guys can't sell, your commons, your uncommon, any rares they have too many of, you guys could just give to me, that's fine. My Pokemon card collection grew exponentially. One time, my friend got a Pokemon card that I really wanted. I can't remember what it was, like a Scyther or a Wigglytuff. Like a, like a hollow. And I mean, he stole it. He had gone inside this house. We were sending my friend who was a lot older as Firebird. Pontiac introduces the first turbocharged V8 of the 80s. Available only in Trans Am or Formula Firebird. With power swelling out of the hood and telling the world where it's at. A 4.9 liter message of appreciation to true believers. The way Pontiac knows how to deliver it. The world's only turbocharged V8 available in a production car. Now that's more Pontiac excitement for the great ones. He had gone in this house to meet with this girl for a minute, and I just figured, you know, I'll be Robin Hood, dude, you know, like, he doesn't even know what a Scyther is from a Jigglypuff, and, uh, so I took it. I took the Scyther, or the Wigglytuff, whatever it was, and I put it in my pocket. Maybe he was a closet Pokemon fan, because almost immediately when he got in the car, he looked through his cards that he had just taken. He turned around in the back seat and pulled out a knife, a Rambo, Rambo like combat knife. Grabbed my shirt and put it to my neck. Kodak, give me back my Pokemon card, he said. All right, dude, dude, I was just checking it out, man. I was just looking at it, take it, take it, take it. I went back to playing Pokemon, but I was a cheater. I was using a Game Genie my mom had bought me on clearance from a local KB toy store in the mall. Game Genie, the big, awesome video game enhancer is now getting smaller. Game Genie works its power on Game Boy, 
and turn Genie's power off and on as you play. Game Genie for Game Boy with Super Small Codebook. Excellent! I was using it to capture all of the Pokemon I couldn't get from the other games and even the elusive Pokemon Mew that at the time you could only get from like Nintendo special events. One day while I was cheating on the video game, I corrupted my save data. So I decided I wanted to do it the correct way. So I went out and got Pokemon Yellow and Pokemon Blue. And on the way back home, I stopped by a pawn shop that my mom had got my Sega Saturn at and I grabbed a little crappy Play It Loud red Game Boy. Now inside of Pokemon Yellow, at the time. It had a free movie ticket for the upcoming movie, Pokemon the First Movie. They're soaring, shocking, bubbling, and beaming. And on Wednesday, November 10th, you can catch them all in theaters for the first time. Only Burger King has limited edition gold-plated trading cards from Pokemon the First Movie. And same. Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears, also featuring It Was You from Ashley Ballard. The Pokemon soundtrack. This is about a year later from our last story with uh, the knife and the Pokemon. In Pokemon Yellow, there was a free movie ticket to go see Pokemon the first movie. This is about a year or so down the line, and I was still stoked on Pokemon. The movie was playing even further away from where I obtained Pokemon Red. It was actually playing one more town over in the city of Pleasant Grove. I woke up really early one Saturday morning and zoomed to Pleasant Grove on my Dino VFR, taking about two hours at 7 a.m. When I went in, I handed them the special ticket that they had included inside my Pokemon Yellow game, and they handed me one of the Pokemon cards, and surprisingly, they handed me back the ticket. They didn't clip it, they didn't do anything. I thought about this as I watched the movie. I loved the movie, but they were giving away four Pokemon cards, and I wanted to try to get them all. You know, you gotta catch them all. So as soon as I left the movie, I turned right around and went back into the next viewing. Again, the, it was a different usher this time. He looked at my ticket, handed it back to me, handed me another card. I was able to ask for which one of the four cards I got. Watched the movie again. This time it was about uh, maybe one or two o'clock in the afternoon. I ended up riding my bike back two hours to Lehigh. I had a plan. I I found my friend Jeremy across the street. I told him, look, I'll get you into Pokemon for free. All I want from you is the Pokemon card they give you. He was stoked, he was down, but he said he needed to call his mom first. We called and called and called, but we didn't get any answer. I finally convinced him that it was the wisest course of action to just leave, watch the movie, and come back later. His mom will understand. So Jeremy popped onto my pegs, and we blasted the movie theater. On the way, I revealed to him my full plan after I'd already got him halfway there. Free with every admission, receive one of four all-new cards for the Pokemon trading card game, while supplies last. I'm going to go into the theater with my ticket. You're going to sit out by the back door. I'm going to pop out the back door. I'm going to hand you the ticket. You're going to come around into the front. When we got to the movie theater, everything went according to plan. I went through. I got it. I got another Pokemon card. Went out the back. Told Jeremy, make sure and grab Electabuzz. He came through. As he went through, I guess the usher got smart. He ripped the ticket and handed him half. But we got all four Pokemon cards that day. So we watched Pokemon for the night viewing. It was even more packed than the earlier one. I remember the crowd erupted into applause when the Nintendo logo floated around at the first in the movie. We watched the movie. We loved it. We talked about it the whole way home. He was riding on my pegs on my shoulders. We just talked about, you know, Mew. Mewtwo, uh, the clones, you know, I wondered, you know, why did Mew make Ash forget everything? Did Ash really die right there? Did they really bring him back to life? As we rolled into our neighborhoods, the smiles on our faces turned to frowns. We saw Jeremy's mom outside of her house crying. As we rolled up, she screamed at Jeremy to get inside the house and informed me that Jeremy was now grounded from me for life. She had called the police to put in kind of like a missing persons report for her son. Jeremy was a few years younger than I was. I probably should have done that because it really, really worried his mom. Jeremy, and I'm sure he'll share this with his mom. Jeremy's one of my subscribers, so I just want to tell you, bro, I'm really sorry. To your mom, I'm really sorry. Thank you for the elective buzz. I still have it. Worth it. Now, this gets kind of personal. I have to tell this story because a lot of people have heard about this story, and I've told bits and pieces, you know, a lot of my friends, but I've never kind of told the full story. And of course, I'll, I'll switch the names up to protect everyone involved. Now, listen up. There was this girl in my school. We're going to call her Misty because that's fitting. Now, Misty was beautiful. Don't get it twisted. She was very beautiful. But 
I hated her. She had a little minion that she rolled around with. And even though she was beautiful, even though, you know, she looked really good, she wasn't very popular. She wasn't very popular with the popular girls at all. And she wasn't popular with the guys because she was rude to them. She was rude to everyone. She was a rude person. She's a very, she's a very bad man. She was just known for being mean. One day I was leveling up my Pokemon in the triangle. Triangle was like a little foyer as you walked into the junior high where after you ate lunch, you'd kind of sit in there and socialize. The cool kids would sit like three steps up. The losers would go down the hall or whatever. I was sitting there just, you know, minding my own business. I was fighting the Elite Four. And I was trying to level up some Pokemon. But I long beat both yellow and red and I'd use blue in conjunction with those to obtain all 150 Pokemon legitimately this time. You know I kind of always fantasized about going to one of like the Nintendo Pokemon League championships and you know taking it all like I, I had like daydreams about this so that's what I was doing. I was even though I beat the games and I even though I had all 150 I was juicing up my Pokemon for the day. I take it all in the Pokemon Championships that I read about in my Nintendo Power and EGM magazines. Suddenly, I felt someone come and sit, like, right on me, like, right next to me. I looked over, and it happened to be Misty. Aww. Oh. Come on, I thought, like, what? What did I do to deserve this? I'm just sitting here minding my own business, finding the Elite Four. Come on. Now, usually she would roll around with her little mini. They would come by and say, oh, it's so gay that you play Pokemon, blah, blah, blah. You know, something stupid and ignorant like that. But this time she was alone. And she just looked over at me and said, oh. I was like, yo, what's up, Misty? You know, what's going on? Uh, so you want to ditch with me? Well, uh, sure. I mean, sometimes I go over to the cemetery and ditch class. I lied to be cool. All right, let's go before the bell rings. Come on, come on, come on. She said, as she stared straight into my eyes. I got up and I followed her, but the whole time I just kind of had an uneasy feeling like, what's going on? Like, I thought it was a setup. As we got to the cemetery, we went back into a little hollow where it looked like maybe some other kids had previously used this place to ditch class. I sat down and booted back up my Elite Four save. I was right before Gary, so I went and engaged him in battle. So Are you coming at lot to ditch? Misty said. Oh, yeah, all the time. I lied again. Oh, well, that's cool. She said awkwardly. Somewhere deep down, I thought, you know, maybe it was a setup or she was tricking me. But I was completely decimating Gary with my Articuno, Moltres, and Zapdos. So I didn't really pay it any mind. Suddenly, from my peripheral vision, I noticed Misty stand up and come over to me. She sat right next to me, and I could feel her eyes boring into the side of my face. I tried to keep calm and tried to keep focused on Gary. I just froze in his Pokemon solid with Articuno's Ice Beam. I remember, like, I'm not just, guys, like, this story, I'm not just, you know, you tell a story and you're like, well, I remember I was playing Pokemon at the time, so let's make up that I had a Chansey and Chansey used Egg Slapper. Dude, I remember to a T when she sat next to me, I had just froze. Okay, I don't remember to a T because I don't remember who the hell I froze. But I remember that I froze one of Gary's Pokemon solid. And that's basically a free-for-all. You can just kick the crap out of whoever you freeze solid. So I was super stoked on that. All of a sudden, girl sits next to me, and she's just, like, right here. Just, like, eyes right here. You know, and I'm just trying to, like, you know, one of these. You know, like, okay. What's going on here, down? Inches from the side of my face. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I couldn't focus on Gary the Fairy anymore. You know, girl that I, that I effing hate is... Right next to me, being a weirdo, what do I do? So, here's what I did. I, I took my Game Boy, because everyone knows when you're in the middle of battle in the Elite Four, you can't save. And I got an Articuno that just froze one of Gary's Pokemon solid. So, I took that Game Boy, and I looked over on the grass, and I, I found like a little, like a little grassy, like a little, you know, kind of looked like a bird's nest, a little nice place, if you will. And I set my Game Boy down over there, you know, in the nice place. I had to stay on, and I didn't want anyone bumping it, and I wanted to keep that safe. I made it a point to not make eye contact with Misty until the Game Boy was safe and secure. You know, I came back, I sat down, I was still kind of looking forward, and you know, I did one of these. And it was the look. Guys, if there has ever been a look in my life that I've got that like just sent every signal in the world, this, 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 this was the look, okay? You know, the feeling in your stomach, like, you really need to use the restroom after Taco Bell, or you got the lovey-dovey butterflies, kind of similar, you know? Now, she attacked. She bit into my face like Snorlax into 300 pounds of oranges on the Orange Islands in the second season of Pokemon. The makeout was strong with this one. Well, I, for one, 
think this is a violation of students' rights that must stop immediately. I want to meet the student in charge of this system, and I'll see that it stops. Mm, here's a picture. Huh? It's a girl? Oh, yeah, you're right about that. She can violate my rights if... Well, my account was strong with I can't do a Yoda voice. Now, we were so into our tonsil hockey, we must have not noticed the Jigglypuff that had came up and started singing lullaby. Because I literally fell off the log that I had been sitting on onto my back, and she fell on top of me. Lips still locked. She didn't miss a beat. This went on for a little while. I promise my mind didn't wander back to the Elite Four. Okay, maybe, 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 maybe one. Pushed me down hard and stood up abruptly. Do you have, uh... You know, oh yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure, right here, right here, uh, let's see, here, let me grab it, uh, I lied, I was trying to play it off, you know, looking through everything, like, oh, where did I put it, I have no idea, let's just, let's see, oh, it's, it's, oh, maybe it's in here, let's check my wallet, oh, I, uh, you know, looking for this, this rubber that didn't exist, never had existed. I was making a huge production of my illegitimate search. Oh, snap, dude, I totally forgot. I left it in my locker. I lied again. I'm sorry. It's okay, Misty said. She put her arm around me and started walking me towards the school. Come on, let's go back to school. The bell rang. Let's hit our last class. I snuck out from under her arm and said, wait, hold that thought. Went back, grabbed my Game Boy. I have to finish finding Gary. Uh, Pokemon was still frozen solid, and I was able to beat him again and get some more experience points. Now, I went on to join the local Pokemon League at Dragon's Keep, which is a local comic shop a few cities over. It's still one of my favorite comic shops to this day. These days, they even have one in my hometown of Lehigh, which sucks. I wish I would have had that when I was a kid. I even entered the Utah State Pokemon League Championship, and I took ninth in state out of like 500 people. As I've said in previous videos, I was sent to a school for bad kids. On top of the other things, you know, the people there banning me from video games, they also banned me from Pokemon. The staff there were evil and sadistic. I was beat down once because they told me I was to have nothing to do with Pokemon, video games, any of that, and they ended up reading my journal one day. And of course, I never wrote anything in my journal. I just drew all 151 Pokemon, and when they found that, they beat the shit out of me. But really, Pokemon has always been a beacon of goodness and hope for me my whole life. Seeing all these posts of people going out, meeting each other, meeting new people, people with mental illnesses, people with depression, people with PTSD from being in the war, going out, you know, finally getting out of their house and meeting other people with a common, uh, common bond of loving Pokemon, you know, people from all walks of life. Uh, my friend works at a hospital in California. She, she's uh, been there for surgery. She said all the doctors are out, you know, playing Pokemon Go. I've I've seen, you know, the vets, you know, all these different people, all walks of life were playing it. I can really relate to these guys because when I was at my darkest point, when I was in the boys' ranch, when I didn't think there was any hope of me ever getting out or ever ever having a good life again, I would, you know, daydream. I'd bring myself back to, you know, in front of that Game Boy or in front of those cards or I'd doodle those silly little pocket monsters and it'd just bring me to a better place. You know, for a minute, for one golden moment, I was out of that hell on a journey with friends trying to catch them all. Game means a lot to me. And even though I haven't played it, I've got my money's worth. Seeing all these other people enjoy it is enough for me. You know, it's, it's great. I love it. All right, guys, this has been a really heartfelt video. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for coming through. Hey! Huh? I thought you guys were gonna wait for me by the snack bar. How's the water? Uh... What's wrong? Why are you looking at me like that?